We've been waiting so long The season's finally here Soak it up and cheer Cause Deal's Talk is here No need to fear The wait is now gone So farewell so long Cause Deal's Talk is on all right. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to season two, episode six of Timberwolves Talk today. We got Chris and Peyton. Um, bomb of an episode last yeah. episode. That was great. Um, that was a good felt, episode. It felt good, you know, just to have some stuff to talk about. Like, you know, obviously the situation's, you know, not good with Curson, but, you know, it, it feels good to have something to talk about and to get almost excited about, if that's the right word. Weird excitement. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, just. A, a new change just something to talk about man because there's not a whole ton of new news right now you know as we were as we were talking about previously but doing our best yeah um one quick thing i want to say about the gerson thing is i saw a tweet from either darren or dane um and they said that it seemed like at media day none of the players really were affected by that at all or at least they didn't seem like it most of them were just kind of like yeah it happened but we're ready to move on and just keep going on with the season so that was good news i thought that maybe it would potentially affect the players a little bit more than that. Yeah. And just to, just to mention too, is, uh, you know, Dane, Dane hasn't had, you know, too many good tweets for recently. If uh, no, Dane's been in a, he's been in a firestorm and you yeah. don't like to see that from a fellow colleague, but it is hilarious. It's actually hilarious. Just. Yeah. If you, got, if, situation. If, if you guys didn't see it, I mean, there's screenshots all over. All you have to do is just look up Jared Vanderbilt response. To I don't Dane even think Moore. he, del- I don't even think he deleted or you, it. Yeah. You could, you could just go to Dane Moore's page, but oh, well, I'll read it. I'll read it. Yeah, just read it it's off, funny. Read I mean, and it's, yeah, it's just a funny tweet. We'll find it here. Um, so the tweet, um, right here. Um, it reads, Jared Vanderbilt getting up a bunch of threes after practice. He's clearly changed his mechanics. Shot is way faster. Still not going in much. And then, and then Vando responded and said, LOL, you lame for this. And then, um, or LOL, you so lame. And then Josh Kogi also piped in and said, uh, why would you tweet this, Dane? Jay Vando's been in the lab. Mechanics look great, and he knocking it down. So yeah, tough little run there for Dane, but you know, it happens, man. It happens. Yeah. So first thing I want to touch on in this episode is Chris finally came through after a long time. He he did the dance. He did the bass hole dance. Um, yes. We'll drop it. We'll drop it right here. We're also going to put King Physique's um, Woe's Eye. He's always in the comment section. We're going to put his take on the dance up now. Taking up the mouse, we do the mouse dog. Got a wretched in my coat, got a girl doing coke. We drink up and we smoke, but she always do the mouse. It kind of turned me on when she licking on my stones. My chains on and a freeze. It look like I made a clone. Want to see you get. So, yeah, after seeing both of those, what do you guys leave in the comments section? Who had the better the better moves here? Um, King Physique came up with it first. Chris did his own take on it. And, you know. Yeah, I thought my rendition was honestly pretty good. You know, like all the credit in the world, the king. But, you know, it it's hard. to It's hard to do a dance like copying someone, honestly, like. His moves are so much better than mine. You know, I'm not a dancer. I, I'm, I'm the classic bar and wedding dancer guy, but I, I'm even, not, I wouldn't I'm even not like give king. you that, bro. I wouldn't even give you, you wouldn't that. Give a, little, me that. Little, a little stiff at the joints. Kind of look like the, uh, the, the tin man from. <laughs> we'll have to have a bass hole dance competition. No, so you guys I, I, no, can I, see. I, no I'm not saying oh, I'm a good dancer. And the other thing is, too. Me. So, you know, I came through for you guys um, on that. And so now I think it's Peyton's turn to do a little light gold challenge here. So this is what we're saying. If we get 40 likes on this video, 40 likes, go tell all your friends to like. Peyton is going to have to sing the Timberwolves talk intro song. 
Yep. You won't even know. You won't even know it's me. That's how close I am to Luke on the uh, on the vocals. I'll exactly. just sing it with the background music, and uh, we'll see. We'll see. But forty likes, and if you don't, if you don't reach it, I'm never doing it. So, guys, we need the forty likes. Like we need it really bad. If you guys want to see Peyton sing the I intro song, know, I don't know if you want to see that to be honest. But um, first news that we're going to cover today, actual Timberwolves news that is not uh, pertain to Chris dancing, is those new uniforms, those new jerseys. What What do you think about them? What's your first reaction? The first time you saw them pop up. So the first time I saw them, I like obviously really liked them because I like that style of jersey. You know, I have the black one with the green trees. Um, and I also really like the blue throwback jersey with the green trees, too. So me personally, I really, really liked them. But I also kind of want them to bring back the black throwback jersey, too, with the trees. And I don't know if we'd have to do that as a city edition or if that could be an alternate. So I like them. I like the new ones. I might even get an ant jersey of that one. Cause I think they're sick, but I think the Timberwolves just need to redesign their jerseys, use the black and the white, white jerseys with the trees, and then use the blue as the aways with the trees. I mean, that would look money. Yeah. I'm i uh, I'm a, I'm a little different here. At first, when I first saw them, I, I didn't like, them. I'm going to be honest with you. Simply the fact that they weren't the original blue ones with the tree yes. trim. They're different. And that, I don't know, that was hard for me at first to like fully like them. I was like, ah, I don't know. But now a little I'm, rendition on them. It's kind of cool. Yeah, exactly. And I think, I don't know, I feel like the lines on the side uh, up here, I think it might be doing a little too much, if I'm going to be honest. But um, yeah, we haven't, I didn't even see there's lines on the side. Yeah, look it up. They're not, they have, so MN Sports News posted the first original picture of them. And yep. uh, um, he said there, it's, so it's a combination of three jerseys. So I'm pulling it up too. So if you go to the last slide on his post, it's a it looks like a um, a combination of the old KGs, the Kevin Love old Timberwolves, and then the gray City Edition jerseys. Huh. That's kind of cool, actually. Um, let's see. So yeah, you can see the lines on the side. I I think if they Heard didn't you pull have, them up. No, I, I'm not gonna pull them up on the screen because then we have to do a lot of editing. Yeah, that's fair. but um, maybe I'll maybe I'll throw a picture. But yeah, can you see uh, on the side there's those lines, and it, I don't know. I think they'll grow on me for sure. I think so too. I think that was the um, I really liked the blue one. What was last year's city edition? Was it light blue one? The no. black. It was the black. Yeah, the black one like had those. to grow on me. It, it <sighs> they were okay. You know, they weren't bad, but they're definitely like probably the lowest of the low city edition so far. Yeah, the gray. I didn't really like the grays. I'm going to be honest. I didn't like the blacks last year. I love the light blues. And these ones, I'm not, I'm not going to be that guy that like says they don't like it in the beginning and then love it. Like, I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't right now I'm, I'm up in the air, but I think I'll end up liking them. That's and really, fair. it ends up it ends up like depending how we play in them. I think that plays a huge role in it, if I'm going to be honest with you, because if if we suck in them, then that's all I'm going to remember about him. But if like Ant hits a game winner in that jersey, that jersey automatically becomes goaded. Yeah. And the other thing is too, is like the light blue ones are just so cool, but you know, that season was so bad and they're so like players were awful. So like those ones don't get as cool of a rep. The the, the reason, you know, people like the Prince ones and the light gray ones because we made the playoffs for the first time since 2003. So it, you really do have to get that jersey remembered to like, yeah fully be attached to that one and i think you also got to see the players in the jerseys before you can actually make like you got we got to see what what color um, sleeves they're wearing what color tights they're wearing all that even with the shorts like you got to see the short like you just got to give it time this is just the leak it's not a hundred percent confirmed yet i mean it allegedly is but not by any like um fully verified source like darren or anyone like that yeah (laughs) um so guys also Oh, man, I forgot what I was just going to say. Oh, what are we thinking of Anthony Edwards dreadlocks? What are we thinking? I I, I honestly kind of like the afro better, if I'm, being, if I'm being completely honest. Yeah, I'm not one to really judge another man's hair too hard, <laughs> but um, I think Ant with the, with, the, with the afro is a classic look. I think maybe tall Ant this year, maybe it's a new look. I don't know. That's like it, fro- it makes him look shorter. Like, it makes like him look shorter. Maybe. It does make him look short. It makes shorter. him look shorter. That's all I got to say, because the Afro gave him an extra two to three inches. And now 
with the braids, it's going down a little bit. But hey, maybe he's gonna be a, a better player with the braids. Yeah. Um, who knows? Another thing, another big thing that I've been seeing a lot of tweets about is Carl Anthony Towns has allegedly lost 40 pounds in the last two years. And I don't know, I don't know how to what what I have to say about this. I think that well, he said he said he lost forty seven pounds due to the uh, the C one nine. Yeah, we're not going to say it. Obviously, the yeah. big one nine. We're not going to say anything else on. Can't say the name, obviously. So he okay. So he said he lost forty seven pounds because of the because of the the V, and then he only gained seven pounds back. Is that apparently? I saw I saw a tweet or a quote from a reporter that said he lost seventy or forty seven pounds because of COVID. I think is what he told them. And he's also slimmed down a lot. It got more defined. So yeah, he's definitely going to be more agile. But I think the thing with Cat was he already was super agile for a center. He was already getting bullied. I mean, he was. So now is he going to get bullied more? I mean, I don't. That's what I'm saying. Like, if he's in way better shape physically and all that, it's going to make him a better player. But my yeah. only worry would be that he's going to get bullied in the post even more than he did. We do not. We do not want that. Because isn't that iconic photo of um, Demarcus Cousins? Isn't that against Cat? Yeah, it's like Cat falling down and Demarcus is making the funny face. No, no, it's Cat's trying to back him down and and oh um, yeah, just, yeah, and he's just standing there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Cat memes were definitely flying last year. Yeah, for sure. But I don't know. I think it it's not a it's not a negative thing to look at. He's been grinding so hard in the off season. That I cannot banish him. Like, I mean, I'm trying to look at like maybe, maybe it'd be better if he was if he added more weight, but you can't bash him. At least he's been putting in the work, and that's something that he's been criticized for in the past. Yeah. And he's the the thing I don't get though is like at 280, he was already like super agile and quick. It was and he was still getting bullied. So like I don't even know if we need him for really quickness anymore. We just need him to, you know, guard the paint, in all honesty. So it would have been nice for him to keep the weight on, but you know, I guess you guess things happen. Yeah. All right. Next topic. Um, Patrick Beverly, um, as he had said, uh, the Clippers, they were trying to sign a contract extension this summer and they couldn't work anything out. So they said he, they, and it was like a mutual thing. Like it wasn't no hard feeling. So they said, all right, give us three teams that you want to go play for. And it turns out that one of the teams he wanted to play for was the Minnesota Timberwolves. And then also, he he said he knew that like getting traded to Memphis was all part of the plan. So he said even when he got traded to Memphis, he knew he was coming to the Timberwolves. And I thought that was really interesting because I swear to God, he tweeted, like, let's get to work when he got to Memphis. So that that doesn't add up much to he, me. Well, but. he tweeted, I think, grit and grind, which is like the Memphis like basketball motto, I'm pretty sure, mm-hmm. or something like that. Right when he got to Memphis, but yeah, it was weird how he said he knew it all along, like weeks prior to even get trading from the traded from the Clippers that he was going to be a Timberwolf. So maybe he's just he's pumping the guys up, showing them he wants to be there. No, he he's really doing a good job saying that he wants to be on the Timberwolves, and it um, and I just saw a video actually of Anthony Edwards saying that him and uh, Pat Bev are already like super good friends. So yeah. that is really good sign. It's a very good sign. Because if we, we want – that's a good role model for Anthony Edwards to have. A little yeah. bit better of a role model than Ricky. I mean, I guess Ricky Rubio, he was a great character, off the court, great leader, great guy. So that was a good role model. Patrick Beverly, though, on court, that's what – because Ant's defense, let's be honest, his defense lacks. So if yeah. he could just get a little bit of, of uh, Bev's dog mentality, that's what we need. That, that's why – that's why we're- Pat Bev's getting paid ten million dollars a year. You know, give him that give give him that dog mentality. Seriously, yeah. Um, another thing, media day, always a great day for um for us as fans, just to like hear because the players don't get to talk much during the offseason. Basically, mm-hmm. all it is is the media just talking about the players, making their own up, making up their own narratives, spinning spinning it however they want to spin it. But on media day, you get to hear what exactly what the players are saying. And yep. um Carl Anthony Towns said a lot of stuff about how all of his chips are on the table. He is all in if the Timberwolves offered him an extension that he would no doubt sign it. I thought that was huge news because you always hear about Carl Anthony Towns wanting to leave. Like there's always those narratives that 
he's not he he is going to leave if we have bad seasons. But if he's saying that, I mean, yeah, great, 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 great sign that you know he wanted to be with us for the long haul. Um, it is up to the Timberwolves now. Hopefully, our front office wants to keep Cat around. He hasn't even entered his prime yet, so you know I think it's going to be an awesome next couple of years if we can just keep our core three together and not change anything. Cough, cough, Ben Simmons. Yeah, um, we uh, there's always more Ben Simmons stuff, man. Every there time, there's always more. And man. we try to say, we try to say, like we don't want to talk about Ben Simmons. We feel like that it's, but we can't avoid it. No, we there's, just can't. We can't avoid it because it's a huge thing, and especially the 76ers had their media day, and you know who wasn't there. Ben Simmons. ben Simmons. But do you know who talked a lot of shit about Ben Simmons? The 76ers. So, like, we got to talk about it because the way I see it, um, after everything's unfolded lately, I think that Ben Simmons' stock has gone even further down. Yeah, it's it's tough to gauge his stock, honestly, at the moment, because I know teams would, you know, give up a lot of picks and some young players. Um, well, I think the most, the most interesting part was Embiid, you know, saying all the stuff that they traded Jimmy Butler just to keep Ben Simmons happy. You know, they focused the offense around him for a number of years, um, you know, and Embiid did everything. He kind of let it out on the court, said it was disrespectful to the organization, the players. So I think the time's pretty much done there because Ben said he's – what a ben, ben had a quote from a couple weeks ago that said he was done playing with Joel Embiid. Like he, their relationship is strayed. Yeah, and he also, I mean, he just, I just heard, I just saw on Twitter that he's willing to forfeit $33 million not to play this year. You got to, you got to realize how much <laughs> money that is. <laughs> that, That's that, life changing money for everyone on the planet. Never work a day again in your life, that one year salary. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like anyone, if you even, uh, even if you could get a million, like people go to work for jobs and, people that they hate for $10 for 20, $12 an hour. Yeah. People work in environments where they hate all their coworkers, their coworkers hate them just, and he's willing to forfeit $33 million. So is that, is that mean, is that put a play into his character a little bit? Do you want that coming on your team? Yeah. I mean, if you're the next team, wouldn't you be a little bit scared of this behavior? I mean, like, I this am. is just erotic. Beh- this doesn't make any sense. $33 million, Christopher. I think erotic behavior was not the correct. What word does erotic even mean? I didn't. I was gonna say a word, but I can't. I didn't want to say that. You, you can look up what erotic means, but <laughs> erotic. Erotic. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Erotic. Was, all okay. the kid, all the kiddies, cover your ears on that one, Peyton. Sorry. Yeah, sometimes um, I just uh, not erotic. Um, <laughs> sporadic. Sporadic. There we go. What is it? Just, I think that's what I meant. All right. That's all right. It is Keep erotic. Going. It is erotic behavior, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it doesn't make any sense. It, I'm, I'm going to be honest. Like he, I don't know. I feel like they got to be able to work something out. You know yeah, what I'm for saying? Real, man. Like, like it's Aaron Rodgers situation. Me? It's Aaron Rodgers situation. That's, that's the way I saw it. Like Aaron Rodgers, he seemed just as far away from the team as Ben Simmons was. You know what I mean? Yeah, seem just as disconnected, and they figured something out. So I just, I don't know. If I was a betting, I'd say a week ago, if I was a betting man, I would say that Ben Simmons would still play for the 76ers this season. But now, I, I, I wouldn't bet that. I would say that there's a very good chance that uh, he won't play for the 76ers. I but personally that, agree. But I, I don't think that there's a great chance he's going to play for the Timberwolves, if I'm going to be honest with you. No, honestly, I think the most likely likely scenario may be Golden State or Sacramento. I don't know how Sacramento would really pull it off, though. If I'm being completely honest, but we're they're gonna want D'Lo, and we're not gonna be able to give no, up D'Lo. We're not we're, we're not gonna want to give up D'Lo, bro. Have you have you seen those videos of D'Lo and Cat on Media Day? How happy and like they literally look like best heartwarming, friends. man. Heartwarming. If you, split, if you split them up, dude, that's like splitting up two best friends right before the season's about to start. Yeah, I think D'Lo is going to have a great season, too. I really do. You know, do first too. first off season with everything in place, you know, it's going to be, have some stability, you know, besides the you, previous, not really, though. previous situation. But that doesn't affect the players at the end of the day, like a personal relationships. Definitely, it does. But on the court, that's not going to affect the players one bit. So no. And um, another thing I want to touch on, dude, a rod. <laughs> I swear those videos of him shooting threes in the in the cutoff hoodie. 
Yeah, that, that's classic. Dude, that makes me laugh. That is so funny. He's got a good jumper, man. He's draining those threes. <laughs> He's got the white, the white cutoff hoodie with the white pants. He's got the white man jumper too. Yeah, the he, white man at the Y. Yeah, he, yeah. Hey, Rod, man. <laughs> Mark Laurie shot for him too. That was a little funny. Yeah, I think it's funny that so him and J Lo broke up, right? Yep. Now, dude, now, now all he does is now he's fallen way down and he's hanging out with the Timberwolves, the Timberwolves practice facility. Yeah, that's tough. That's <laughs> hey, but I don't man, even... he's enjoying it, man. You never saw Glenn Taylor doing that shit. No, dude, you Glenn Taylor seen... on the even... uh, on the live stream looked like a zombie, dude. Like his smile was like fucking hilarious. Like everything about him was just like get him out of the front office immediately and let the two young guys come in. Yeah, fun story about uh, Glenn Taylor. I want to give a quick shout out to my buddy uh, Jacob Dalton. He's a linebacker at Mankato. He um he mows Glenn Taylor's lawn. Actually, yeah, hey, you didn't know that. No, I did not know that. Jacob Dalton, friend of the show. Um, does he have a personal relationship with Glenn? No, he said he said Glenn though. Like you'd think he's just a regular guy. So Glenn lives out in Mankato, or at least he did last summer or two summers ago. And he yeah. said Glenn would just be like trimming the hedges out there while they were mowing the lawns. Like, and he would like he'd always say hi to them, very respectful. And like, I I didn't think that. And he said his house wasn't even that crazy, considering. He's he a billionaire. billionaire. He's, he's a, a yeah. He said his house is billionaire. Yeah, and he's living in Mankato, Minnesota. No offense to Mankato, but it's not the place you want to be living as a billionaire. No, he's probably the richest person there by far. Like probably he's double. probably the rich. He's probably the richest person in Minnesota. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know the facts. You're the facts guy, but he's de- he's de- he's definitely up there. Yeah, get the facts, man. They- Who's the richest man in Minnesota? It might be or Glenn. woman or woman. What are you or talking woman. about? What or are you, woman. Come on. Have or woman, or woman. Sorry, yeah. Glenn Taylor, richest, richest person. Nice. Um, All right. I want to address a few things here. Um, I am Timberwolves fan. Was coming at me very hard last episode. Um, apparently, wasn't bringing the enthusiasm, and I just want to say, I'm sorry, man. I'll, I'm going to do better. Just for you, man. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying yeah, to bring what's the deal with that. I don't know. I always thought I brought the enthusiasm. I mean, I didn't, I mean, I was, I was a little sick last, last week. It was 11 PM. Yeah. Your I mean, mom was commenting on your status. Yeah. She said I looked like a, I had a sick face, but yeah, and that's the stuff we do for you guys. We, we push through, we push through. Um, uh, first preseason game Monday, 7 PM central standard time if i'm not mistaken uh against the pelicans what are you what are you thinking what are your thoughts going into it are you gonna Uh, or how 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 uh, how hard are you gonna analyze that game um so zion's gonna be out and we're playing our starters like we we said we're not resting anybody who's you know sitting anyone out so i would expect us to beat up on the pelicans um that's just expected for the regular season too. I would expect people to look rusty. Um, I'm honestly really, really looking forward to uh, like, it's obvious to say Ant and J max progression, but I'm really interested in Balmero. If I'm being completely honest, mm. like mm. what does he look like on the court? I've seen yeah, some practice man. videos and he's passing the ball around Duncan. So yeah, I'm no excited. Clue. Hopefully he gets second team minutes and uh, yeah. All right. I mean, what if I, I- Another question is, what if he what if he takes a starting three position, you know, he later could, in this year? He could, bro. I mean, he he's, he's like, a first round pick. He is a first round pick. He's our first round pick this year. If you want to look at it, I've heard people say that if he would have waited to enter the draft till this year, he would have been a top ten pick, no doubt. Really? Yes. Yeah, I'm excited, man. You know, hopefully he can beat a Kogi out for that three because he's. He's taller than a Kogi. A Kogi is a six foot four or three, and that's really uh, tough to work with sometimes. Apparently, to Ryan Saunders, he was actually six ten though with adjusted height for wingspan. So that obviously didn't work out playing him <laughs> at the four. But we're excited oh. to have Balmero. He's six seven, um, lengthy. So hopefully, he can be that three and D wing guy. No, and he's almost plays like a point guard from what I've seen. A few highlights. He he can really dribble the ball, and he's a great playmaker. So yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited. Um, Darren's actually been giving some coverage to him over the off season a little bit. So what has Darren been saying about him? Darren's just been saying, yeah, a kid got to play in the uh, 
It, who does he play for? He played for Messi's old team. Argentina. The, well, he played in Argentina. No, uh, FC Bar. He played F for FC Barcelona. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he, the year we draft him, he was on the B team. But this year he got moved up to the actual team. And he's playing with guys like Nikola Mirotic um, and a few other, like, you know, high level college and NBA players. So, you know, you should do? be ready. I'll get it. Look, look up his stats. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep speaking. So for me, um, I, I'm a little bit opposite of Chris here. My, my expectations are very low going into this first preseason game. And I expect Ant to have a really rusty game. If he, does, if he misses a lot of shots offensively, I'm not going to be worried at all. I'm honestly expecting it. I'm expecting everyone to be super rusty. I'm expecting the offense to look pretty bad. Um, both teams are going to look bad. It's it, it's going to be, I mean, just think about it like this. Last year, after a preseason game, Chris said that um, Jarrett Culver and Anthony Edwards were going to be the next Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Hey, so, everyone, he he likes to say this. I like to bring it up because you know, it's that's, true. That, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's Payton's not. quote, but it's okay. You know, he can keep telling his lie, but. No, I, you know? I, no, that's not true. I You, you said it, and I mean. <laughs> no, you, no, no, it's I, on, it's on record. Fi- no, I am Timberwolves fan. I am Timberwolves fan. You you got to go find them, man. You go no, that it's up. Peyton that says it. We'll see. We'll see. But um, but yeah, like well, like I was saying, I just ex- I don't expect much from this game, and I'm not really gonna. It's almost like I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, I'm excited to see Balmero, but in the end of the day, I'm gonna erase it from my memory and just remember that it's just a practice game. Nice yep. to get to see the boys out there again. That's right. How are you going to watch the game? That's another thing. I, I don't know how I'm going to watch it because we made a video about how much Valley Sports North sucks. It did well. It did, did, it did well. well. It did well. But, um, yeah, so how are we going to watch it? it? Do they have an app right now? Do they have a streaming app? How do you get it on a smart TV? I'm just going to legally stream it, but I can't tell you guys the name of the stream because then it'll get banned. So I'm, but there's the problem with that. How are we going to live stream the game if you're um, illegally streaming it and I'm watching it live? We can't stream. We can't stream the game. Anyway. Oh yeah, we're not going to be showing it on the screen. But I'm, yeah, the, I'll be usually, I'll be watching it in the background. Usually the illegal, you'll be watching. Yeah, yeah, but the illegal stream dude, you're a little bit behind, isn't it? I guess I don't know. We'll have to yeah. see. We'll we got to get more going. on that. Um, oh no, Andrew does have Bally Sports actually. Andrew does have it. Andrew I'll Kanoki. be able to watch it on TV. Andrew Kanoki, a uh, great roommate, even better commenter in the comments. Go like his um, comments. Yeah, we up. already might actually be doing some Vikings talk on, on basketball media. Um, yeah. You want to address the uh, out of hibernation thing? Because I feel like people were probably pretty confused when they saw that pop up on their uh, subscription feed. Just give them a little rundown, a little a little plug, you could say. Yeah. So, you know, everyone, Peyton and I's, you know, eventual goal is to – possibly have a media company out of this and have, you know, a lot of podcasts and blogs within, you know, our content. So we're going to have to start expanding at some point. We tried a little, you know, we tried a little bit of it last year, um, but I'm going to be hosting a solo, you could call it podcast, you could call it talk, um, talk show. It's going to be after every single bears game, I'm going to do a ten, little 10 minute rundown of the game and what's happening in the next coming weeks. I know you guys are some Vikings fans and stuff like that. Um, Packers, but you know, go tell your bears friends. Um, we're just trying to get some more audience within our, uh, more engagement within our channel. So, yeah. Yeah. And if you're, if you're a Vikings fan or you really don't care about the bears at all, we are not offended at all. If you just scroll past the video and pretend that you didn't see it, like we're just, we're trying out new things. And yeah, I mean, if you roll, if you rock with us, you'll rock with us trying to expand. It's just kind of how it is. But you have no obligation to watch it. We we do not care. We're just trying to get it out there. Yep. Um. Yeah. So huge week last week. This week is kind of more melancholy. I'm gonna stop using big words because I don't know what they mean. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's probably think, a pl- it's probably good. But yeah. So 40 likes. Uh, I will sing the uh, intro song. I hope you guys don't get it if I'm going to be honest with you because I, I'm already sweating because I just I don't know. I think I'm worried that I'm going to sing it and it's going to be so good that we're going to have to use it as the intro song from now on. I, I agree. I think you're going to sing it too well. That's the problem. So I might have to dumb it down a little bit just just to still make it funny. Yep. But yeah, um, I don't think 
I don't think we'll do a new episode after the first preseason game. I think we'll stay on this Thursday schedule. But, yeah, next episode we'll definitely be talking about that. Hopefully there's not – if I'm going to be honest, hopefully there's really no new news before yeah. next before next uh, week's episode. I hope that it just kind of stays quiet. I guess unless it's a Ben Simmons trade, then and we'll we might have to do the emergency. emergency. The old yeah. emergency Timberwolves talk. The classic. Yeah, I was – I. We were debating whether to do an emergency Rosas, but it was on Wednesday that all the stuff went down and we were like, well, we're already doing a podcast. Well, I mean, Thursday. It was a, le- it was kind of an emergency Tim Rose talk. Like it yeah. was like, it was like the same nature. Like we jumped on the, on the train. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, I don't know. I, I saw a few things to talk about. Like um, I just saw a tweet that Ryan Saunders was spotted at a Denver Nuggets practice. I saw that as well. And I don't know. I don't know what to think about that. Player development maybe. I hope so. What if he's head coach? No, they wouldn't make him head coach. They, Denver's <laughs> I'm, too good. I'm joshing. I'm joshing. But, yeah, hope everyone has a great week. Chris, hope you have a great week, man. Don't, don't, don't week, be going man. too crazy. Who's Wisconsin playing this week? They got Michigan this weekend, everyone. Uh, oh, hey, so I, just tell- want, I just, I just want to put this out here too, guys. So, obviously, you know, the performance against Notre Dame was a sight for well, sore eyes. One of the worst games I've ever seen, honestly, in my right. life. And I and I just watched that Bears Browns game, so I just saw two of the worst games ever. Um, They're both your teams, both my teams. Yeah. You know, our quarterback Graham. You know, first name missed, basis. Obviously, you got a class of him, don't you? Yeah, you know, I, I sit <laughs> very, I sit next to him some days in in my consumer science class, and um, you know, he looks sad this week, honestly. Did, so he, let's, did, let's, you, did you give him a pat on the back or something? No, I didn't. I didn't. Did you but, smile at him or something? You, I, him like, I, you know, I. I you want to you want to keep your quarterback's morale high. Like I don't know, I I don't know how to go about it. I'm gonna be oh. honest, kind of, kind of just let him sulk. So you stand with Graham Mertz. I do stand. You know, he's one of us, man. He's our grade. He's he's 20 years old. Like, it's just a kid at the end of the day, man. He, I mean, yeah, the the ruthless comments about him. They, I mean, dude, you know it's bad when you're trending on Twitter as like a random college student. Yeah, he just. Yeah. You don't like to see that. You go, you go play big college football to like get the praise, not get that. Yeah, we're at, we're at Camp Randall too this weekend. Um, you know, I won't be there. I'll be at Oktoberfest. But you know, for everyone at the Michigan Wisconsin game, we you know we got to get loud. We got to get loud for the boys. Um, one more thing, I also think you should uh, explain is what the hell happened. Ob- obviously, you got your whole podcast talking about it. But Justin Fields, man. From an outsider point of view, I didn't watch the game. I just saw Not, the stats. So that's what and I'm that, saying. You just saw the stats, but you saw how bad the game plan was. You you no, read I didn't about see that. I didn't Did you see not it. read about that? No. He got sacked nine times. They, you know, they rolled him out twice. They only twice in the game. They used five man protection the whole game. He was it was like they were just letting free rushers run right by and tackle him. So, you know, he threw no interceptions. He kept the ball safe. That's all he he's got. gonna get hurt. He's gonna get hurt. Oh, that's the problem. He he might get hurt. Behind. He actually hurt his hand last game a little bit. If I was him, bro, I would just fake an injury and sit out until you get <laughs> a new coach, new offensive line. Yeah, pull a Ben Simmons. Yeah, pull a Ben Simmons. But, all right, this is like the 12th time we've said uh, so long on this episode. Just so much random stuff to talk about. Yep. But hope you're having a great week, guys. Comment something. Just comment something. Help out the algorithm. I don't help out the out. Maybe we'll, we'll read some comments next no. episode too. Oh, maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe. maybe. I'll we'll read a couple. You know, leave something down there. See if you get picked. Yeah, yeah. But uh, thanks for listening, guys. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't, and have a great week. See you guys later.